So now that I've explained how the virtual memory system works, let me just go through the slides and make sure that I've, I've touched upon all of these points. So the whole reason that we did virtual memory is to give every program the illusion that it has access to a very large address space, which is contiguous. And that helps me to write my programs easily, right? That helps me to call procedures, allocate the stack sequentially and, and manage the stack. In reality, since physical memory is limited, and since it is being shared by a large number of programs, individual virtual memory pages have to be mapped to individual physical memory pages. And once you run out of physical memory space, some of the data has to be moved into the hard disk drive, and that's referred to as the swap space. Because programs exhibit locality, we don't have to go to disk all that often, right? So if you have 16 gigabytes worth of memory in your actual physical memory, then most of your requests are going to be serviced by DRAM memory accesses and you don't have to go to disk. Now, when I'm doing the translation, when I'm giving you an address, right? So let's say I produce a 32-bit virtual address. If you assume a page size of eight kilobytes, it means that once I've identified a page, I need to pick out one byte out of the eight kilobytes in that page to return it back to the CPU, right? So I need another 13 bits to pick one specific byte within a page. Okay, so when you produce a 32-bit address, the last 13 bits in this example are referred to as the page offset. So this is very similar to how we had a block offset in the cache. So we said that every cache block is made up of a 64-byte entity. So when I give you an address, the last six bits tell me which byte I'm interested in inside that 64-byte block. And everything else is used to identify the specific block in memory. So exactly the same way, if I'm dealing with an 8-kilobyte page, I need a 13-bit page offset that tells me that once I've identified the page, I'm going to use these 13 bits. So once I've identified a page here, I'm going to use these 13 bits to pick out a specific byte in that page. The remaining bits over here are, go are going to be used to identify where that page is sitting. So this is the virtual page number. That goes through either the page table translation or the TLB translation to pick out the physical page number. So that so once those translations have been done, so either going through page table or the TLB, once that's been done, I've identified that this physical page is sitting right here. Okay, so the, so the most significant bits are used to identify a specific page and then the least significant 13 bits in this example are used to identify a specific byte in that page. The virtual memory system is handled in a fully associative manner. That means I'm going to keep track of the many pages in physical memory and a rough order of how those pages have been accessed. So I'm able to keep track of which page was least recently used. So if I need to throw something out of physical memory to make room for a new page, I'm going to evict that least recently used page and put the new page in its place. Like I had mentioned earlier, the page table is this long list of how every virtual page of a program is mapped to a physical page. Some of those entries point to pages in physical memory. Some of those entries point to locations on the swap space. The page table is really large. It may be placed in memory itself. And so to avoid expensive lookups of the page table, we have what is referred to as a translation lookaside buffer or a TLB, which is on the processor chip. And it has, you know, say 64 entries. You can have an L1 TLB, you can have an L2 TLB. And that allows you to cache as many of these page table translations on the processor chip itself. Thanks to locality, you have a large number of TLB hits. Every time you have a TLB miss, you have to potentially go to memory to access the page table entry. And so that results in multiple memory accesses just to get, you know, one word of data. Now, we have not yet talked about whether the cache uses virtual addresses or physical addresses. Okay, so I'm going to spend a few minutes discussing that. So here's my processor up here. It's going to access, let's say, L1 and L2 cache. And once it does not find data, it has to go to physical memory to retrieve that word of data. So we know that the processor always issues virtual addresses. So the processor is running whatever the compiler produced, and the compiler only has this notion of virtual memory. So every load and store that the processor produces is producing an address that is the virtual address. If you're going to get something from memory over here, the address that you need to send to the memory system is the physical address. Okay, so basically somewhere between the processor and the external memory system, you need to convert the virtual address into the physical address. So the question is, what does the cache use? Does it use virtual addresses 
or does it use physical addresses? Now to explain that, let me first introduce what is referred to as the aliasing problem. So let's say that you have a multi-threaded application. So you have an application that's broken up into multiple threads or multiple processes and all of these threads are running on some kind of multiprocessor system and they're all sharing one large physical memory over here. So now you have you know, one unified physical memory, so there could be one page over here that has some shared data structure. Right? So here's a data structure that all of these threads need to access. And each thread has its own virtual address space. Now different programming languages and different systems handle this in different ways. But when you're building hardware, you're trying to accommodate for any possible scenario. So one possible case that can happen is that you know, each one of these programs has their own virtual address spaces, but they all need to access this one shared physical page. So this physical page gets mapped to each program's virtual address space. And the virtual page number that you use for this physical page number could be different in each one of these threads, right? So here's a physical page number P that this thread is referring to as virtual page number A that this thread is referring to as virtual page number B, C, and D. Okay, so here's a single physical entity, a single physical page P, that has many different names. Each thread has a different virtual name for this one physical entity. Okay, so this is referred to as the aliasing problem, where there's one physical name that corresponds to multiple virtual names. Now, if I design my caches to work with virtual addresses, what can happen is that process A first makes a request for that block. It brings in the block into the caches. And the tag that you use may use the virtual name, right? So I refer to that block over here with the tag of A, which is my virtual name for that block. So now if thread one continues to make requests for data in that page, it's going to have, let's say, cache hits, and things are going to be fine. But if the next process comes along and refers to that same piece of data, but refers to it by a different name B over here, when you look up your tags, you are going to have a cache miss, right? Because the tags are referring to that piece of data by the name A. But if you look up a different name B, you're going to have a cache miss. So you go into the memory system, bring that block into the cache, and create a new block in cache which has the name B, right? And similarly, the other threads could bring in blocks and, and place them in cache and refer to them by names C and D. So because of this aliasing issue, you now have multiple copies of the same data sitting in your cache. And when one thread makes a change to its cached copy, that change is not reflected in the other cached copies, right? So everybody else is working with stale data and the changes made by one thread are not propagated to everybody else, right? So this leads to correctness problems. So it's not good enough to refer to things in the cache by their virtual names. You have to refer to everything in the cache by their physical names. So if one thread has a cache miss and brings the data into the cache, it has to use the physical address as the tag. And other threads, while looking up the caches, have to also convert their virtual addresses into the physical addresses. And that allows all of these threads to agree on a single cached copy of that data inside your caches. Okay, and so that avoids any kind of correctness issues. Okay, so what we've just concluded over here is that when you're dealing with the caches, it really helps to only use physical addresses. Okay, so the processor is producing virtual names. Those should be instantly translated through the TLB into a physical name. And that physical name is then going to be used to access the caches and the external memory system. Okay, in many modern processors, you have a pipeline that looks like this, right? So the processor produces this virtual address. You send it through the TLB, produce a physical address. And that physical address is used for comparing whatever you get from the tag array, right? So you look up the cache. When you're looking up the cache, at this point, you don't yet have the physical page number. So you use the virtual address to look up the cache, identify a set, you know, read things out of the cache. All of these tags are physical addresses. So you use the physical address to compare against whatever came out of the TLB, right? So the TLB access is done in parallel with the tag array lookup. That allows you to do physical tag comparison, signal if the data is a cache hit or a cache miss, and then you send the data back to the CPU. So before I wrap up, I just wanted to go through this one last slide. I won't go into this in great detail, but it helps to kind of go through this, read it, and just understand what can happen. And what it tells you that in the best scenario, you are going to have a TLB hit, you're going to have a cache hit, and the data moves ahead with data that is retrieved within a single cycle. 
But if bad things happen, you can have cache misses. You can have TLB misses. When you try to look up the page table, you know, the page table lookup itself may not be a cache hit. You may have to go to memory to look up the page table. And then sometimes the data that you're looking for is not even sitting in physical memory. It might be sitting in the swap space on disk, right? So all kinds of bad things can happen. And so if every bad situation happens, it could take you, you know, many, many millions of cycles to get the data and return it back to the CPU. Okay, so just going through this slide will make you aware of the large amount of effort it takes to retrieve any entry from memory. And, you know, we have page tables, we have the memory system, we have TLBs and caches to try and make sure that you don't go through these bad situations most of the time.